That's one thing I feel like a lot of women don't understand nowadays. Y'all be demanding, demanding, and fucking demanding. Y'all don't even deserve half of this shit. <laughs> What's up guys? Welcome to the Bourbon Effect. My name is Tunji. You already know what it is. So let's talk. As you guys can see from the title, today I'm going to be telling you my red pill story. All right. So obviously this is an infamous topic with a lot of the guys in the manosphere community. Um, majority of men, I would say, in the dating scene today has gone through this. And if you haven't gone through it, you will at some point. Hopefully you handle it better than some of us did. Um, but this is essentially what made me into the man that I am today and gave me the knowledge that I needed to know to talk to you guys today. Because this is essentially how I got exposed to the red pill as well. <clears throat> so let me get right into it. Um, I met my ex on an app called the Black App. <laughs> now, some of you guys have heard it. The app sucks, I'm not gonna lie to you. Um, not really many to choose from, unfortunately. And that's not even, you know, to say, even though it's for black people, you know, the black app. But a lot of the women on there were overweight. So I wasn't really like fucking with it. I honestly just had it just to have it, just cause you know, sometimes if I would get bored, you know, I would just swipe through. And all of a sudden I came across my ex who was nothing like a lot of the other girls were. Um, she modeled, she was fit, um, she was very attractive. And I was actually surprised that I saw her on there. I thought she was a catfish at first, but um, eventually as time went on, I realized that she wasn't. So to skip forward, I hopped in her DMs, we chatted it up and one thing led to another and we ended up going on a date. And that date honestly went really good um we we enjoyed the date we were vibing with each other and we actually hooked up that same night which is kind of funny now that i think about it how hold on bro how like it was it was anyway back to what i was saying so we ended up hooking up we started seeing each other more and more from there and you know stuff just started to escalate and then three months four months later already a red flag um, we got into a relationship and not a red flag on her side, more so on me because I think it takes much longer than three months for you to vet a girl, whether you want to be in a relationship with her or not, at least a year, in my personal opinion. But, you know, obviously at the time, I didn't know that. A lot of the knowledge that I have now, I didn't have. So we ended up dating. And she was honestly everything that, you know, a guy would look for. She was attractive. She was fit. She modeled. Um, she cooked for me. I mean, she was vegan. But that wasn't that's such a bad thing. There are little times here and there where it could be inconvenient. But, I mean, she introduced me to a lot of vegan food that I still eat up till today. So there was an upside on that. But, um, yeah, she essentially did all the things for me that guys want from women today. And I know you're thinking, okay, how the hell is this a red pill story? Well, I'm going to get to that in a second. But I'm just explaining to you how this shit kind of caught me off guard a little bit, even though it shouldn't have. But she cooked for me. She was submissive. She didn't argue a lot. When I started to see red flags is, one, I found out that she didn't really have like any ambitions or like plans not that i'm looking for a woman that's like super ambitious but when i would ask her like simple questions like hey where do you see yourself in five years where do you see this and that she would never have an answer and it's not to say like oh you shouldn't you some people don't think that far into the future but it's just almost as if like even when i said two years she had no idea it was almost as if she was just living life and just not thinking about her future or anything like that. And that was one thing that kind of like stood out to me, but I was just like, you know what, whatever, 
you know, she pretty much did everything else that I wanted her to do. I didn't really care at the time. As time went on in 2020, I lost my job. I um, got arrested. My car got towed. There was a lot of uh, shit that went on um, in 2020. But regardless, the main things within the time I was dating her was I lost my job. And it was really depressing because I had not had a job. So whenever I just wake up, I wouldn't go to work. I couldn't really do much, you know? And this was around like that COVID season. So it's not even like I could actually work and do the things that I wanted to. And the gyms were closed. So I didn't have my job. I gained weight. I wasn't as fit as I used to be anymore. And I felt like hella depressed, you know, I was super down. <laughs> was just going through a lot mentally. And um, for some of you that may not know, I grew up an only child. So I would always be used to handling things by myself or isolating myself because that was the best way or probably the only way that I knew how to deal with it. And, you know, one thing led to another and I was, you know, just going through a lot and I didn't really know how to express that to her. And within that time, I ended up finding out that she was texting this guy. We were in the room. I remember exactly how it was. She had just finished, you know, chatting it up with her gay best friend at the time. Supposedly they don't talk anymore. But yeah, her gay best friend at the time, they had just finished talking and I had seen like her message open, like with my peripheral and I saw like a purple heart. And I'm like, I don't remember anybody sent me, I don't remember her sending me a fucking purple heart. So like, who is this purple heart for? So in my mind, I'm thinking like the fuck, like who, who the hell is getting this purple heart? So I confront her about it and I see it and I'm like, yo, who is Perp. And that's literally what she named him as, Perp. And then with a purple heart on the side. And I'm like, who is this? Oh, she was just like, oh, this is just my friend from blah, 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 so, so, and so. And me being a very logical thinker, right? I'm just like, so you put hearts on your, your, your friends? You don't find that suspicious? You don't find that suspicious? You don't find that suspicious? Like, what, what does that mean? And she was just like, no, like, it's just like, it's a friendly thing. Like, it's like an inside joke that we used to have, blah, blah, blah. You know, she <clears throat> came up with it like that. And obviously at the time, you know, I care so much about the girl. As she's just using her feminine energy to just, you know, caress me with her words. And like, no, babe, I like, that's not what it is and stuff like that. Women are very dangerous because they can either, they can go one or two ways. Actually, no, there are many ways. Fuck that, right? They can use the, the feminine tactic to where they're just being extra feminine, extra, you know, uh, seductive. And, you know, just pretty much just using their feminine energy to convince you otherwise. They can manipulate you. Well, even with them doing that, they manipulate you. But then there's just a manipulation tactic to where they try to trick you into thinking one thing, even though you see another thing. You can see that two plus two is four, right? And she can manipulate you to think two plus two is five. Now, obviously, it's not that literal, but you know what I mean. Women are very good with their words. They know how to, you can see something and they can convince you otherwise. It's, it's very impressive, honestly. And then they can just go the gaslighting route to where they just make you feel like you're, you're insecure. You're insecure. You're sassy. These fucking girls, bro. The gall. Anyway, as I was saying, <laughs> like, so I'm confronting her about it. And I'm like, what, well, like, what is this? Like, so what do you mean? Like, he's just your friend and all this. And like I said, she starts to use her feminine energy and, you know, she just warms me up. And eventually I'm just like, you know, maybe I am overreacting. Maybe um, she is right. Maybe I'm seeing it a certain way. And, you know, I'm just, you know, I started to <clears throat> cope with my, I, 
my mind started to cope with what she was saying because like I said, I didn't want to come off insecure or overthink it. Cause at the time I was just like, maybe I'm just overthinking it. And I never got caught with that issue again. Like that, it, it never happened. I saw it that one time. And th the funniest thing is that I had this girl's passcodes, her passwords to her phone, to all that shit. So when she, obviously when she was trying to talk to me about why it wasn't such a big deal, in my mind, I'm like, I have this girl's passcode. Like there's no way, <laughs> like there's no way that she could be texting that shit and it be something serious while I have her passcode to her phone and her password. And she kind of used that <clears throat> uh, in her defense. And I was like, me being a very logical thinker, I'm just like, okay, maybe that's true. Months go on. Like I said, I'm going through a lot of shit. And eventually I'm going through so much stuff to where like, I don't know how to verbalize my emotions because I'm just naturally, I, I work hard. I, I like working. I like to have ambition. I don't like being complacent. I like keeping myself busy. But I always was used to working and I couldn't work. I wasn't making any money. I couldn't take her out. I couldn't do the things that would make me feel good. You know, when you truly care about someone or when you truly care about a woman, she doesn't have to tell you or nag you to get her stuff or buy her anything. You naturally have so much care for this person that you just want to get that stuff even without her asking because of how much love and care and nurturing she brings into your life without her asking for it. So you just want, that's one thing I feel like a lot of women don't understand nowadays. Y'all be demanding, demanding, and fucking demanding. Y'all don't even deserve half of this shit. You need to understand, believe me, if a guy truly cares about you, you will not have to ask him to buy these things. If you are doing the things that a man wants and needs in his life as, as his woman, as his girlfriend, as his wife, whichever, he will do these things for you without you even having to ask him. It's just crazy to me how, how they, they can't grasp that concept. But like I said, I cared about this girl so much that I wanted to do things for her. Cause like I said, she was feminine. I had her, her passcode, she was submissive. She was a model, she was attractive. Like she hit all my boxes. I was literally look, thinking about the future with this girl as we all fucking do. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, it was so hard and I was so embarrassed about looking sensitive in front of her and being vulnerable in front of her that because I was so used to self isolating and dealing with things, I ended up breaking up with her. I ended up breaking up with her and, um, yeah, she was not expecting it. She wasn't expecting it. She was honestly really thrown off as, you know, I would, I, as she should be because it kind of came out of the blue. And I, I still feel shitty about it to this day because she didn't deserve it, but because I didn't want to be too vulnerable in front of her because I didn't know how to deal with my emotions at the time. Like I know how I knew how to deal with it, but when you're in a relationship, it's a little bit harder because now you have somebody else in the picture. Now you have somebody else in the picture who you have to consider. So the things or the ways that you would handle things when you were by yourself may have to be a little bit different when you are with somebody else. Or if you decide to keep the same way of handling those things, you have to communicate that with your partner. So they know what the hell's going on. I didn't communicate that with my partner. I didn't communicate that with her. I kind of just told her, hey, like, we got to break up. And I didn't really give her like a valid reason. And also the reason I gave her wasn't even all that good in the first place. It kind of sounded dumb. I can't remember what it was, but I remember it wasn't like the best of excuse. And, you know, she... She was very sad. Like I could tell like she was not expecting it. And you know, I could see like she wasn't crying, but I could see like her ear her eyes like tearing up. That's how you know like how hurt she was. You know like when you can't even like 
oh man, <clears throat> I couldn't even explain it, but <clears throat> that happened. It was a week, a week went by, a week went by. And within that week, my depression and anxiety got so much worse, so much worse because I didn't realize exactly how much she was helping me at the time with her just being there. And when I tell you, if you have a good girl, guys, make sure you keep her. Don't fuck it up. Don't fuck it up because you want to be out here in the streets and all that shit. Like, if you got a good one, bro, don't fuck it up. Because... When you find a woman who's feminine, who's nurturing, who's submissive, who cooks for you, gives you your their passcode and their location and all that shit, bro, just a woman being around you, her feminine energy alone is healing, bro. It's healing. But my shit got worse. It got worse and it got so bad to the point where I was actually like, trying to take medication and I realized that with her not being there I I needed her I I felt like I needed her because I couldn't it was getting worse and she wasn't around I didn't have someone to vent to like it was a lot of shit going on so I ended up going to her and you know she lived like five minutes away from me I called her told her hey I want to talk to her ended up telling her exactly why I did what I did And before you knew it, I was just bawling eyes. I I broke down. Like, all that shit that I was holding inside, like, was just pouring out, you know? And around that time, it was around the whole George Floyd thing. So there was a lot lot of shit that I was going uh, going through mentally that I just, it was hard for me to express. And, um, yeah, I let it all out. She was supportive and she was there for me. But there was still this feeling that I got, like, even though she was there for me, it felt like she was not there anymore. Like, that essence that she used to have kind of dwindled, or it just wasn't there at all. And I could feel it a little bit. And when I told her, hey, like, I want us to get back together. Um, I did what this, That's why I did what I did, thinking, you know, she would understand and be like, yeah, I understand. Let's get back together. And she didn't want to get back together. She was just like, you know, within the week that you were gone, I had to go through a lot emotionally and mentally. And you weren't there. I I didn't hear anything from you. So I just kind of need that time. I need some time before we get back together. And I was like, cool, I understand. And so for three months, guys, three months, I pursued this woman and tried to do everything that I could do to prove to her how much I cared about her and how much I was willing to fight for the relationship. And those were like the three worst months of my life. Because not only would this girl like toy with me a little bit, she would play this hot and cold game. One moment she was nurturing and feminine and the girl that I remembered to cold where she just wasn't as responsive. I would barely hear from her. You know, she wouldn't want to like hug me sometimes or kiss me sometimes or just little things like that that she would do that was just fucking with my head. And I couldn't understand what I was doing wrong. Like I kept feeling like I was doing everything right to show her that I cared for her, that emotionally she was not there. She just wasn't there anymore. And really, I was just there to keep her busy, keep her company. So eventually, one random day, you know, I go to her house, we're chilling, we're having fun. She goes upstairs, right? And I do the thing that every red pill story says the guy does. What do I do? I go on her phone to see what's in there. And mind you guys, you know, this guy, I have this girl's passcode, I have her location. She hasn't changed her passcode since we broke up. So I go on her phone, right? And guess whose fucking name I see? I see the perp guy. You know the perp guy? The one that I was telling you about with the gay friend? Yeah, I end up seeing her message. Or I end up seeing his message. 
that he sent to her. And this guy is talking about, yo, like I had fun last night and I have I had a good time and you know, this and that, blah, blah, blah. And I go to photo and I go to photos, right? And I one once I see the scratches on this guy's back, right? The photo that that were in the shit. The photos that were in the messages between them, I ended up seeing, and this guy had scratches on his back. Scratches. Any nigga who who seen scratches on his back knows what that is. And that shit broke my soul. My heart sunk so low, right? And not only that, but I'm not sure if I mentioned it earlier in the video, I kept seeing her after we broke up. I kept seeing her go to, you know, this one spot, this one apartment complex, and I couldn't put my finger on it. I'm just like, where, where is she going? Like, what? Well, who, who is this? Her friend? Like, what, what is this? Because I still have her location even after we broke up. So I keep wondering, but at, at some point I was just like, you know what? I don't care. I'm not gonna think too deep into it. Sometimes I would even see her, then spend the night there. Right. And eventually in the message, he says, oh, like I had a good time and this and that. And I'm thinking to myself, like, hold on. I seen her at that apartment place earlier today. Which means that all those times that I saw her at that apartment complex, when I had her location, <clears throat> she was going to see that dude. And you want to know the worst part is that the week that we broke up, the week that we were no longer together, I had seen her there a couple times within that week. So within the time of a time span of a week, she was already fucking another guy. She was already smashing another guy, y'all. So once I put two and two together, I confront her about it. And this is when she starts doing the hot and cold thing. Remember when I was telling you about the hot and cold? Well, this time it was cold. I confronted her about it. I was, you know, super upset about it. And she was just like, well, we weren't together. Like this and that. We weren't together. And you broke up with me like this and that. And then she was just like, it was just dick. It was just for dick. I was just like, you know, looking back at it now, the fact that she would even say that to me already just shows that she ain't got no respect for me. You're going to talk to me, tell me it's, it was just dick. You, you think it's just dick to me? I beg your pardon. I beg your pardon. Pause. That's not how we think about it. That's not how we see it. You know, this, that, it was just dick that you're talking about. This is, this is all we're thinking about. This is all we're fucking hearing. And then the sleep just puts it back in. That's how we see that shit, okay? It's not just D to us. Pause. It's much more deeper than that. Because us as guys, Know how we can get in the bed. We know how aggressive we can get. So, <laughs> when she said this, right? <clears throat> this is when you would typically think a guy would be like, you know what? I have self-respect. I have dignity. I'm going to fall back. That wasn't me. <laughs> that was not me. Like I said, you live and you learn. That was not me. And for a couple more weeks, I still kept trying to pursue this girl. I still kept trying to pursue this girl. Because she kept putting in her defense, we weren't together. I broke up with her. She was going through a lot, so she didn't have anybody to talk to and to tell about what she was going through. And that was her friend and blah, blah, blah. Whatever. You know, you know how they like to spin shit, you know? So I, I still keep trying to pursue this girl. And we're... And Eventually, we plan a date. It's supposed to be going to like a cool restaurant that 
you know, me or her are supposed to go to. This is actually the day I plan to ask her to be my girlfriend again, right? It's already, it's already been like a couple, like two months. We're on like the third month now. <clears throat> and I'm getting ready. And as I'm getting ready, she says, oh, I'm at my friend's place or I'm at a friend's place. I will be back um, by six o'clock because we're supposed to go to the place at seven. So she said, I'll be, I should be back by six o'clock um, with some friends right now, this and that. I'm like, okay, I don't know why you're with friends when you already knew we had plans to go somewhere. Fucking idiot. Oop, sorry. Um, <clears throat> but um, yeah, that's what I'm thinking at the time. That's not like what I was thinking now. But at the time, that's kind of what was on my mind. So I'm like, okay. Seven goes by. Don't hear anything from her. I call her. She ends my calls. 7.30 goes by. I'm calling her. She's like, yeah, sorry, running a little late. I should be there by 8. 8 o'clock goes by. Now I'm calling her, and she's not picking up my calls at all. She's not picking up my calls at all. And I'm calling this girl. I keep calling this girl because at this point, I'm just like, my mind is immediately going to the fact that she's with that dude. Immediately. <clears throat> and then eventually she picks up. And it's so loud in the background because it sounds like she's at a studio. Go fucking figure. Hmm. <laughs> at a studio. Hmm. Wonder why. Dude probably raps. Hmm. Go figure. Um, so I end up hearing a loud music in the background and I'm just like, yo, I can barely hear you. She's just like, Hey, like I'm running a little late. Can we just see if we can do this tomorrow? And then the, the phone goes off. I'm just like, what the, f what do you mean tomorrow? You made me wait this long just to tell me that you want us to do it till tomorrow. Now, because of this, I go berserk. Crazy fun. Like, I, I just felt distraught in that moment. I was super upset. Like, I was mad. Tears were coming out of my eyes. And then I just seen her sister come back from wherever she was coming from. Because I was literally right in front of her house. And, <clears throat> you know, with all this tears on my face and me just being super mad and super upset... I'm just like, I've done everything that I, that I felt like I could do for your sister. And I've tried to prove myself. And, you know, I don't know what she wants. And I'm just done. I'm fucking done. And, um, yeah, I end up falling back. A couple days go by. And I come back to her place. Um, after I tell her I'm, I'm going to stop by real quick. And I literally let her know. I'm just like, hey, like. I'm thankful for all the things you've done for me. I'm grateful for the memories that we have together and the experience that we've had together. But um, <clears throat> I think I'm going to fall back. And I'll let you do what you want to do. I won't bother you. I'm going to just, you know, do my own thing. <clears throat> and before that happened, days prior to that, after that whole fiasco happened, I had to sit down and reevaluate myself, my life, everything. Because that's when I realized I, I couldn't even recognize myself anymore. I was like, I've never been that emotional in my, in my life. For me to just get out of character like that. <clears throat> so I had to sit down and reevaluate shit. And within that time, that's when I found the red pill. That's when I found the manosphere. That's when I found all of this. And one video led to another. Watched another video and another video after that. And that's when a lot of stuff started making sense. A lot of stuff started making sense. And I was just putting two and two together. And it was almost as if they were speaking to me. Like... They know exactly like how I feel or what I've been through or 
my experience with women, like they know it, like I'm not the only one. And that's what drew me to it. <clears throat> and I feel like that, that is what draws a lot of younger men to the red pill space because of the experience that they've been through with women. And you can't necessarily express those feelings like that because like obviously society doesn't really care what the fuck we go through. So who do we talk to? Well, you can talk to other men and what better way to do it than online on the internet. And I almost got into red pill rage, but luckily I dug myself out of that hole like way before I ever got too deep. Like, cause when you're taking in all this information, it seems like so much to the point where you're just like, man, women really ain't shit. Women are pieces of shit. <laughs> and then that, <clears throat> that uh, familiarity starts to turn into, you know, rage or, you know, just being super mad about it because it's just like, damn, they really fucking fooled me. So within those couple of days I had watched, I was watching videos. I was trying to reevaluate myself and my life. And I eventually snapped out of it, got to my composure, you know, regained my composure and <clears throat> yeah, I talked to her. We had that conversation and I didn't really talk to her till months after. Even she tried to communicate me. She tried to communicate with me. And within that time, within those months, I was going to the gym. I got had the biggest I had ever I've gotten. I, I did a PR deadlift of 600, like which I was struggling with for the longest. And I was just, I was creating goals for myself and I was, I was getting those goals done. I was crossing off all the goals that I wanted for myself. And within one year, I got a new job. I got my own apartment. I fixed my credit. Like I did a lot. And as I was growing, she could see it. Because guys, the best revenge is success. I'll take what I can get regardless. <clears throat> Baby steps. Things take time. I understand this. <clears throat> I already mentally prepared myself and told myself that making this YouTube channel, I know it takes a lot of patience. I don't expect to blow up like that. Although I can, if you guys, you know, share the video and stuff and whatnot. But um, regardless, I know things take time. I'm not expecting to blow up at a super quick time or anything like that. <clears throat> I think you should do things because you actually enjoy doing it and not because you want to blow up or make money from it. I genuinely want to tell other men and young men my experiences, what I have learned from it, and give it to you guys on this platform in video style. Because I wish I had somebody to tell me the things that I'm telling you guys a lot earlier. But nothing is better than experience. So I guess I'm kind of glad it happened. But regardless, you guys, thank you. I'm starting to see a lot more scene building up on my channel. And it's a good feeling. It's a good feeling knowing that your work is paying off. Regardless, hope you guys fucked with the video. Please, guys, I know a lot of you guys are watching your new, new watchers. Probably this is your first video. What's up? Hit that subscribe button, man. I got a lot more shit to show you. A lot more interesting shit. I'm not going to be a basic YouTuber and also look out for my thumbnails because some of them may actually be photography shots that I do on the side. So look out for that little Easter eggs here and there, you know, make shit a little interesting, you know, but either way, thank you guys for watching the video. Bourbon Effect out. Peace out.